Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week's lesson continues our spring quarter of Sunday School Lessons. The title of this quarter study is Jesus Calls Us. The biblical thread of the spring quarter connects Jesus's earthly ministry as exhibited in passages from all four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to the birth of the church following Jesus's death, resurrection, and ascension, as seen in passages from the book of Acts. We're in unit two. Unit two is entitled Experiencing the Resurrection and has four lessons from the gospels of Luke and John that center on Jesus's appearances to his followers. This week's lesson, lesson seven, concentrates on Jesus's appearance to the disciples at the Sea of Galilee as told in John chapter 21. Get your Sunday school book, Bible, notepad, pen or device and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday school lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, April the 16th is Friends, Food, Fellowship. And this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School Commentary is Jesus Cooks Breakfast. The background scripture is John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And the print passage is also John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. The key verse in this week's lesson is, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And that's John chapter 21, verse 12, the New International Version. Here are three questions to reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, what can we learn from this week's lesson about obedience and following God's instructions? Question number two, what was Peter's reaction when John said, it is the Lord? And question number three, what lesson did Jesus teach his disciples in this week's lesson? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. This week's lesson is in the book of John. John the apostle, son of Zebedee, brother of James, called a son of thunder is the author. The purpose is to prove conclusively that Jesus is the son of God and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. John, the devoted follower of Christ has given us a personal and powerful look at Jesus Christ, the eternal son of God. John begins his book disclosing Christ's identity, as he began in chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And verse two, he was with God in the beginning. The rest of the chapter continues this theme. In every chapter of the book of John, Jesus's deity is revealed. The primary section of John's gospel climaxed at the close of chapter 20, with a summary of his purpose for writing. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. And that's John chapter 20, verse 31. Chapter 21 provides a postscript or epilogue to his account to answer some specific questions left unanswered, such as, number one, who would take care of the disciples without Christ's physical presence? Question number two, to bring Peter's story to closure after denying Christ. 
And number three, to refute the rumor that John would live until Christ returned. And number four, to address the issue of the disciples' future in the world without their master. In today's study, this final chapter illustrates the necessity of mutual fellowship with Christ, remaining in his will, and the need to depend on his power for ministry and to supply believers' needs. This last chapter in John, the epilogue, was written and added to demonstrate once and for all the reality of the resurrection. In chapter 21, Jesus' disciples are back in Galilee, seeking to return to the life they knew prior to the death of Jesus. The 21st chapter of John describes the third occasion when Jesus appeared to his disciples. After a disappointing experience in doing what they knew best, fishing and not being able to catch any, Jesus showed up as an unrecognized stranger by the Sea of Galilee. Knowing that the men did not recognize him as Jesus, the master called out to them. Jesus was preparing the disciples to recognize him and relate to him beyond his physical appearance. In this week's lesson, Jesus prepared a meal for his disciples after teaching them how to catch fish following a long night of toiling with no success. Jesus used the opportunity to teach a lesson concerning restoration, renewed relationship, and renewed purpose. Jesus opened his earthly ministry with fishermen, and John's gospel records the closing of his ministry with fishermen. Throughout his ministry, Jesus showed himself to be a master teacher, a master healer, and in this week's lesson, a master chef. The lesson aims for this week are, number one, discern the meaning of recognizing Jesus only after he says or does something familiar to his followers. Lesson aim number two, awaken to Jesus's healing power in your own life. And lesson aim number three, restate your sense of purpose in light of the spiritual nourishment and sustenance that Jesus offers. As we continue our glimpse into this week's lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first lesson outline is toiling in vain, and that's John chapter 21 verses 1 through 6. The second lesson outline is a renewed fellowship, and that's John chapter 21, verses 7 through 14. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, toiling in vain. This chapter talks about what happened after the resurrection. The disciples were in Galilee in obedience to the directions from the angel to the women at the empty tomb, that Jesus would go ahead of them to Galilee and they would see him there, as we read in Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 through 8. And verse 5 reads, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. In verse 6, He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. In verse 7, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And verse 8, so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. The disciples were in Galilee as instructed. They were to be fishers of men. However, instead, they had gone back fishing. Key point number one, Jesus meets the disciples at the Sea of Galilee. 
and verse 1 in our uh, scripture text for the first outline. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Also, uh, the Sea of Galilee is also known as the Sea of Tiberias. And verse 2, Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. Although all of the disciples were in Galilee, only seven are mentioned here. After these things, as we read in verse 1, is referring to what took place in chapter 20. Specifically, the phrase refers to the unspecified amount of time between the various appearances of Jesus in and near Jerusalem and the appearance that takes place by the Sea of Galilee. It must be noted that the first error these men made was not remaining where Jesus told them to go. They were explicitly commanded to wait at the mountain as again in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, but disobediently changed their location. They were to wait on the Lord. Instead, they were on the Sea of Galilee. Verse three reads, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Peter said, I'm going back to fishing, and six more disciples joined him. In other words, Peter was saying, I'm going back to doing what I was doing before. It is important to note that Peter and the others were not where Jesus commanded them to wait for him. The reality is that they were outside his will at this point in their relationship with him, with Jesus. Consequently, they toiled all night and caught nothing. Although nighttime was the best time for fishing, they went out fishing all night and had no success. They did not catch any fish and they were expert fishermen. All night they had toiled without one sign of fish. Things just don't happen right when we're out of the will of God. Verse four reads, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. In verse five, he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Jesus did not allow them to catch fish until they recognized the Lord. Often, our failures are not due to the lack of knowledge and skill, but because we stray from God's specific will. Their failure was also the means Jesus used to show them and us the futility of people's toiling in their strength to supply their needs. Earlier, during his disclosure with them before the crucifixion, Jesus specifically emphasized that they could accomplish nothing without remaining in him. And verse six reads, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did this, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large amount of fish. The disciples did as they were asked and were successful beyond expectation. This shows a difference between doing work without divine guidance and with divine guidance. They would soon learn that obedience is the path to blessings. To demonstrate this essential principle, Jesus instructed Peter and his exhausted companions to cast their net on the right side of the boat. Ironically, they obeyed without question or hesitation and caught so many fish that the seven of them were unable to haul the net to shore. The key was they obeyed. 
Key point number two, Jesus gave instructions to the disciples. They followed his instructions and were blessed abundantly. It wasn't until they got their eyes back on the Lord and followed his instructions that they were able to catch fish. We must keep our eyes on the Lord, listen to his voice and follow his commands. Second outline, a renewed fellowship. This is the third post-resurrection appearance that John records with the other two being in John chapter 20, verse 19 through 26. Key point number one, Jesus meets the physical and spiritual needs of the disciples. Verse seven reads, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Only John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, recognized Jesus in the dim morning light. John was the first in recognition, but Peter would be the first in devotion. He threw on his outer garment and threw himself into the water to reach Jesus as soon as possible. Peter impulsively and immediately jumped into the water and swam to Jesus after respectfully wrapping a lion cloth around his waist. Peter's desire to be in Jesus's presence was so intense that he could not wait on the others. Verse eight reads, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And verse nine, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. When they arrived at the shore and stepped out on land, they saw a fire of coals, fish laid on them, and bread. Verse 10, Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught, you have just caught. We note that Jesus did not rebuke them for the disobedient behavior and for not doing all or what was instructed for them. Jesus could have reprimanded them for going fishing and not waiting on him, but Jesus is kind and gracious to them. Verse 11, so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many that the net was not torn. Again, it was Peter who responded first. Fishermen often counted the number of fish caught to divide them equally for marketing. Spiritually, this number demonstrates God's power to provide more than enough to satisfy the needs of his people. Key point number two, Jesus extends an invitation to the disciples. Verse 12 reads, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus's invitation to them to come and dine with him was a call to full fellowship with him. Sharing food together was a token of friendship and a form of covenant commitment. Hence, Jesus's request was designed to address their spiritual hunger for forgiveness and restoration to him more so than satisfying their need for food. He also knew they were tired and hungry and he met that immediate need too. Verse 13 reads, Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. The meal's purpose was not limited to a host satisfying his guests need for food. Instead, it was a call to full fellowship with him. We can't imagine their feelings of guilt 
and the amazement of being in the presence of their resurrected master. But none of them asked who he was because they knew it was him indeed. Jesus removed any lingering doubts they may have felt by serving the bread and fish that he had prepared. Verse 14, this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The disciples learned that disobedience blocks physical and spiritual blessings, but obedience often brings them in unexpected ways. The miraculous catch of fish taught them that Jesus was willing and able to supply all their needs if they remained in his will. Finally, they were reminded of the calling to serve him as he graciously served them despite their fears and failures, his invitation to come and dine. While Jesus provides physical nourishment, telling his disciples where to fish and offering them cooked fish, he more importantly provides them with spiritual nourishment, encouraging their faith by being present to them in his resurrection state. Jesus was still modeling what he taught them about being a servant when he prepared a meal for them. Jesus blessed his disciples by hosting them for an unexpected meal. This encounter taught them needed lessons about their relationship with the resurrected Savior. This post-resurrection encounter with Jesus and the disciples symbolically illustrates our relationship with Christ. Although we fail and are disobedient, he willingly forgives and restores us when we repent and turn to him. In summary, Jesus' post-resurrection appearance to Peter and six of his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee was planned to teach the disciples the necessity of obediently remaining in his will and to convince them that while he provides physical nourishment, he more importantly provides the necessary spiritual nourishment to encourage and empower believers to fulfill his call to serve him and to serve others. Finally, Jesus demonstrated to these fearful, disobedient disciples that he is always available to forgive compassionately and restore his followers to complete fellowship with him. Our closing thought and question. The disciples, no doubt, had a lot of emotions about the events that had taken place. But in their time of sadness and disappointment, Jesus shows up, not with accusation or rebuke for not doing as he commanded them to do, but with kindness and compassion as he meets their needs physically and spiritually. Question, when has Christ shown up in your life to meet a physical or spiritual need? In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.